using cruise control in the wet, is this a good idea or a good way to summon a demon from the very pit of hell? I get this question a lot, not so much about the demon, but the cruise control in the wet, even though statistically it never rains in Australia. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. People ask me this question all the time, as if using cruise control in the wet is the equivalent of opening up a wormhole in space-time and thus sucking an antimatter sun into existence. Which could be fun, albeit briefly. I read that it is not advised to use cruise control on wet roads. Why is this the case? While I can see the obvious sense of maintaining absolute control in icy conditions, not using cruise control on, say, a wet but well-drained highway seems excessively cautious. Have I missed something? Executive summary. The advice that you read, Richard, is simply bullshit. And I have a jihad on that. It's just as safe to use cruise control in the wet as it is in the dry. And we'll address why in just a second. But first... We have to talk about this access to so-called information, which is both a blessing and a curse in the modern world. It's a blessing because you can find out anything quickly, because the internet knows everything, clearly. But it's also a curse because plenty of the stuff the internet knows is just bullshit, breathtakingly so. We're all just a click away from learning, if that's the right word, that vaccines give kids autism and fluoride, that pesky neurotoxin designed to keep the population dumb enough for the elites to rule, plus it prevents tooth decay. About how they fake the moon landing, for example, and how climate change is bullshit. How the Holocaust never actually occurred. It's disgraceful. Et frigging cetera. In the olden days, the facts were more or less agreed. We had differences of opinion about what to do about them. For example, slavery. When Americans had slaves, some people, presumably the people with the slaves, thought that slavery was a very good idea. And some other people, they thought it was a bad idea, not just slaves. But there was no real dispute in play about whether there was actually slavery because slavery was a fact. These days, it's so different. The facts appear to be entirely up for grabs, but only because of a collective societal reluctance to embrace objective reality. Because some people find the truth so inconvenient. Way? Respectfully, I think you'll find that that's all about a thing we journos call context. (sighs) Right. I'm being told to get down off my soapbox and answer the question. The internet awash with bullshit allegations that using cruise control in the wet is like the trumpets and the four horsemen and the hail and fire mixed with blood and the second coming of Jesus in Jackson County, Missouri, if you're a Mormon dickhead. But in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. I looked for outrageous claims on this, and Chad Hemat, an attorney from Colorado in the United States, he helped me out. The most dangerous thing you can do behind the wheel is use your cruise control during a rainstorm. Chad Hemat, ladies and gentlemen, attorney at law. Better call Chad. Really, the most dangerous thing you can do in the wet Compared with what? Driving on bald tyres or being drunk or sending a text message or driving excessively fast? The web is absolutely drowning in this kind of bullshit. I've used cruise control in thousands of different cars over the past 20 years, in the dry and in the rain, all without any problems. If you are using cruise in the wet and you crash, it might be convenient to blame the cruise control, but I'd suggest the blame is attributable somewhat closer to home. Obviously, cruise control is a speed maintenance system. It does not know if it's raining, it just tries to maintain the set speed. There are limits on the actions cruise control can take. For example, 
in an automatic, it might drop out if excessive downshifting is required. And it seems to me that the system is programmed generally only to allow moderate throttle inputs. So it's a fairly benign system, and there's nothing special about water either. In the context of driving and rain, water is simply a lubricant, so it reduces the grip the tyres can exploit in their ongoing quest to offer you some directional control. In extreme situations, there can be so much water down there at the some excessive speed that the tread loses the ability to pump it away and the vehicle floats up as if on skis and control is lost. That's called aquaplaning or hydroplaning, but frankly, it's pretty uncommon. The thing to remember about driving in the rain is that because of the lower grip thresholds, you need to drive slower using cruise control or not. And it's up to you to set an appropriate traveling speed. Even aquaplaning, that's not an excessive water phenomenon. It's an excessive speed phenomenon. If you barrel down into a corner in the wet and you encounter an increase in the gradient halfway around and you're also at the limit of adhesion, the cruise control might send a signal to increase the throttle input to maintain that preset speed. And that throttle input might cause you to exceed the available grip at the driven wheels. Because physics. You might slide off the road in that case, but more likely in a modern car, the traction control or the stability control system will intervene and most probably knocking the cruise control out and doing other high-tech voodoo in real time very cleverly to save you from your own stupidity. This kind of incident really is not the cruise control's fault though, and it's certainly not the rain's fault. It's your fault for driving too fast. People who crash always look for a convenient scapegoat because taking responsibility, so confronting, so unpalatable, so at odds with the notion that you're a friggin' ace driver, right? People actually say the car went out of control when they crash, as if that explains it. It's insane. That never happens. If cars just went out of control spontaneously on every third day ending in Y. I think we'd have something of a regulatory problem, don't you? This is exactly the same as when people say the brakes just locked up. <laughs> also a fantasy. Brakes don't do that. Remember the malleable facts syndrome, <laughs> the soapbox earlier? This is exactly that. Cars don't go out of control. Brakes don't lock up. Cruise control does not make you crash in the rain. Drivers lose control because they make bad choices and then they look for a plausible bullshit excuse as a reputational spac filler. So in slippery conditions, around curves, whatever, the cruise control might apply enough throttle to cause you to lose traction. That's not really a cruise control problem. It's a you setting a speed that's too high for the conditions problem. If you are using cruise control during some tropical deluge, perhaps you are overtaking Noah in his B-double full of lumber and all of his helpers, none of whom have ever built a boat before, but you know, the Bible, and you encounter a large puddle and you lose all control and aquaplane into a big line of animals in pairs just standing there, I think we'll be blaming you for the extinction of all subsequent life on Earth and not the cruise control. Obviously, in really inclement conditions, it might be a really good idea to take full manual control of the car. There's a suggestion. But not because of a flaw in the cruise control's operational engineering. Let's not forget that the cruise control is primarily a system designed to enable cruising on the highway at a set speed. If you're not doing that, don't use it. On a challenging twisty road with poor drainage in the pouring rain, I probably would not use cruise control because I would want more control than that. But even if you are doing that with the cruise on and making that fundamental mistake, if there's a problem, all you need to do to disengage cruise control is just kiss the brakes. And we're not talking tongue down the throat in the manner of your crazy auntie after one too many single malts on Christmas afternoon. We're not talking about that. Chased lip service with no exchange of fluids whatsoever is all that is demanded, brake-wise. There's no justification for turning the cruise control off on a wet freeway 
because of some intrinsic danger, such as the early return of Christ to Missouri, discussed earlier. Provided you take all the other relevant safe driving precautions, such as you set a safe speed, you pay attention, and you be ready to brake if needed, etc. And now, this. I do loves me a good non-sequitorial social justice warrior, and as if by magic, here she is. Too many comments about that photo you picked. Not going to be balanced and choose a revealing photo of a sexy man next time. I like your educational videos, but don't appreciate your view of women. Well, golly gee, Jim Bob. She appears to be talking about that. Disgraceful, but hot, but disgraceful, but hot, but disgraceful, but hot. It's like a regressive time loop of infinite disgraceful hotness, a deleted scene from Doctor Who. Doctor Who? The facts are that 95% of this very audience is male. It's a car channel. 85% of the 95% are aged 18 to 64. So I put it to all of you outraged social justice warriors, and you know who you are, that it is entirely healthy for the overwhelming majority of this very audience to detain themselves trivially from time to time over images such as these. As for not appreciating my view on women, no view on women was actually expressed. Unlike, say, US President, the lip-grabber-in-chief, Donald Trump, I actually have respect for women generally. As for individual women, though, I respect them only on the basis of them deserving respect or not, which is why I have no respect for our correspondent, who seems to mean nothing more than some fake-name, pathetic social justice warrior. We don't need any more of them. We're stocked up. They don't add any value. Furthermore, the very distinctive young lady... <laughs> She's young as well. In the photograph and the photographer, they're doing it for the money, honey, and I paid for that shot. This is not some grubby hidden camera in a bathroom or any number of variations on that exploitative theme. And she looks good. So what's the problem? At the risk of answering my own rhetorical question, in this case, I suspect the problem is, despite what they say deep down, there's only one thing that a social justice warrior hates more than a man perving at her boobies. And that would be a man not perving at her boobies. Of course, for fat, middle-aged, pussy-whipped white men everywhere, we could only find one, we could test this, of course this means that you are damned if you do and damned if you don't. So you might as well look. If nothing else, it's like the ultimate therapeutic chewing gum for the male brain. I'm John Cadogan. I hope this helps. Vote one boobies, yes! I always do on election day. I suspect they enjoy the popular vote in any case with women as well. Boobies for PM, yes. Outstanding. Thanks for watching.